In this video, I'm going to show how I made the retracting extendable casters from my mechanics tool chest. And what I'm going to do is empty out the cabinet of the tool chest and invert it on my assembly bench. So I can show you how I built the, the caster system. While building it, I'm going to improve upon the design of the rock shaft. Instead of using this steel tube, 5 8 outside diameter, and rather an awkward arm construction at the back end, I'm going to use a half inch steel rod, which I think will be much more readily available, and that will also require only a half inch, up to a half inch diameter drill bit, which I think most of you will have. I've also given a lot of thought to the design of the arm at the back of this rock shaft, which operates the push rod down to the casters. And the simplest way to design this arm would be simply to weld an arm to the tube or the rock shaft. But I don't suppose everybody has access or the ability to, to weld it. So I've redesigned the arm um, to make up a steel plywood steel sandwich, which I'll show you a little bit later on which might be a little bit more easily replicated uh, in your workshops. Here's my tool cabinet upside down with the casters and dividers removed. First thing I put in half inch dowels for the caster mounting boards to pivot on. Half inch dowels glued and nailed into place. I'm attaching these corner blocks with a little bit of yellow carpenter's glue. Spacing them three eighths of an inch from the front edge of the cabinet, so that with a one inch, quarter inch plywood panel, it'll leave a, a, a one eighth inch recess. And I've already attached corner blocks to the front edge, fr front outer edge of these dividers. Okay, and then screws in drilled pilot holes. For the caster mounting boards, we'll need four sixth and one eighth pieces of 18 millimeter plywood, three quarter inch plywood. The reason for making the caster mounting block a double thickness was simply to make it strong enough. With the actuating arm at one end, my earlier attempt at using just one piece of plywood for a caster mounting block didn't work because the plywood would twist enough under weight that the front of the cabinet would sag and touch the floor. So I needed to double the thickness of the caster mounting blocks yet have it operate within the same height underneath the floor. So, I need to cut recesses in the lower caster mounting block for the casters. First of all, you need to mark for the actuating lever, and then mark one and nine sixteenths. Normally I use a sharp pencil for this, but I'm going to use a, a, a carpenter's marker so, so that the markings will show up. OK. 
okay. The, the other side of the holes for the casters. And then the positioning of the casters. Of course, it needs to clear the activating lever. And I needed to clear the plywood panel at the front of the caster mounting box in the cabinet. And then simply center the middle caster. Now, if I just cut these square holes, I can mount the caster on the upper board, but I don't I won't be able to clear the fork of the caster, so I need to cut a counter bore, a very shallow counter bore. And I'm going to use a three and a half inch hole saw to, to cut the outer circumference of that counter bore and then chisel it out. But to center the three and a half inch hole saw, I need to mark corner to corner to find the center point. So now I need to drill five holes at each insert, um, corner drillings so I can put my jigsaw blade through to cut these out, and a center drilling to line up my three and a half inch, pardon me, three and a half inch hole saw. Well, that, that didn't take very long. Just one, one more step here, and that is to chisel out these counter bores. Okay, I think we've got a sixteenth of an inch all the way around. Next step, glue the boards together.
now that we've got the caster mounting board halves glued together, we need to trim them so they'll pivot in the, in the boxes. So we need a little bit of a chamfer on the lower inside edge of, of each master mounting board. And then, to get enough rotation that the casters will retract, we have to take off some material from the upper inside edge. So approximately the midpoint to about half an inch at the, at the inner edge We'll remove material on the table saw from the up top inside edge of each one. Table saw guard removed, blade and the blade tilted to seven and a half degrees. I'm just going to take repeatedly deeper cuts. to remove the material. Since that as deep as I can go, I can snap off this piece and I'll trim the rest of this off on my jointer. Swiveled outwards. It clears, and with the board rotated downwards, it leaves the lifts the cabinet off the floor almost a centimeter, maybe almost half an inch. So now I have to fit the actuator arm to the caster mounting board. So that means tapering this end. Till it matches the slope of the retracted caster mounting board. Well I've completed tapering the underside of these actuator arms so that they could just contact the floor of the cabinet when the caster mounting blocks are rotated all the way up. quarter inch number 10 screws. Okay, I've finished shaping the actuator arms and attach them to the caster body boards with three flathead screws. I've been working on the push rod to operate the actuating arms. 
to extend them. I'm using a half inch rod as a rock shaft between the handle on the front side and the arm at the back here. So the next job is to fabricate an arm on this rock shaft to operate the push rod and extend the casters. So I've got a couple of pieces of scrap steel left over from another project. One and a quarter inch by one eighth inch steel and I'm going to drill a hole for the half inch rod and a hole for a through bolt to the push rod and come up with a way of attaching this arm to the rock shaft uh, with, without welding. I need to drill a half inch hole in one end of these straps. two straps together with a half inch bolt to keep things lined up. I'm going to cut it off beyond this bolt which connects to the connecting rod and I need to taper the point so it can rotate down close to the top surface of the cabinet. Here's how I made up the arm on the rear end of the rock shaft. Two steel pieces separated by a wood spacer and I drilled through holes in the front spacer for a couple of number eight screws to go through the wood piece and into drilled and tapped holes in the rear piece to hold it together as a sandwich. And then I ground the, the screws flush on the back side because this whole arm and push rod assembly has got to fit into a one inch space at the back of the drawers. I also drilled a quarter inch hole in the front piece and threaded and tapped the back piece for, with quarter inch thread for a quarter inch cap screw to connect the push rod to the arm. And when I install this I'll also saw off the back of this quarter inch bolt flush with the, with the rear arm. The rock shaft is a half inch steel rod. I've drilled a quarter inch hole at the front end for a quarter inch bolt that I just thread into a, a, a six inch file handle to use for a handle. At the back end I've drilled, drilled a three sixteenths hole and the three sixteenths hole is, by, is used to attach the arm at the back end of the rock shaft. with the 3 sixteenths bolt threaded up through the rod and into the wood spacer between the two steel arms. The uh, bolt through the push rod is a quarter inch bolt uh, threaded at the inner steel arm to make sure that it stays installed 
to make sure it stays installed, doesn't unscrew. I cut it off, leaving perhaps a sixteenth of an inch showing, and I peened, peened over. the exposed end of the bolt to make sure that it doesn't unscrew. Okay, final step before we put the back on, and that's to fabricate a stop, a triangular shaped stop, so that the arm of my rock shaft can go slightly over center and hold the casters in the extended position.